Hello, people of God. I have a video that I'm working on that is going to be a bomb. Uh, I will title it Undeniable Proof of Rapture in 2024. But before I do that, I have to do this video of a teaching explaining different things due to many replies of people that believe they're right and they are so far away from the ball, it's not even funny. The lack of understanding is amazing in the people of God right now. And I can see that it's literally due to lack of prayer, lack of fasting, lack of seeking God. They pray five minutes, if anything, I could tell, because of their answers, their complete ignorance in certain topics and they're voicing their opinions as if they knew, as if they were experts in the subject. And th this is, is going beyond reasoning. That's why I want to do an explanation that what is the will of God and what is happening as we speak in the spiritual realm? What's coming down the pike from heaven? What is in the making as we speak, are we about to be raptured this year, or is the Lord working in something else? And first, I'm going to give you a scripture that hasn't been yet fulfilled, and that should give you um, a compass, a north of where things are going. The Bible talks about, in the book of Joel, chapter 2, from verse 23 and on, and this is exactly what is happening right now. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain motherly, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will restore to you, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will shew wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Okay, so let me explain to you what happened to me. I was in a tremendous trial an economic trial and different sorts of trials actually adding up, piling up one on top of another one. I was praying and fasting and crying out to the Lord and the Lord spoke to me. He gave me this word right after this, immediately that same night, or actually it was already going into the morning, about six in the morning, as soon as he gave me this word that he was going to restore it to me, and he told me that these canker worms and caterpillars and all these were demons blocking the blessing, I rebuked them, and instantly I got a deposit in my account for several tens of thousands of dollars. A lot of money. And he told me what to do, that I should invest in you know, the cryptocurrency that the Lord is bringing a revival. The Lord is bringing back the seventh king to continue a short space. And the church is going to need the wealth transfer that he's going to make happen.
by this word, which is the latter rain. You see, when you read this word in the book of Joel, this stuff happens before the sun turns into darkness. Before all that trial, which is going to be when Nebru comes and blocks the sun. Before all this stuff happens, he's bringing a restoration. This is not a gospel of prosperity, which sadly they use part truth and part lies. What they, they do is they mix the truth with lies. Because it is true that the Lord wants to bless you. And because we hate this doctrine, some of us get confused thinking that being poor is okay, that that is the will of God, but that is not. And I'm going to read to you what it says in the book of 3 John. And let's see if you can understand what the Lord says here. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Even as thy soul prospereth. Well, the first thing we're going to point here is, I wish above all things. What is the wish of the Lord above all things? That you may prosper and be in health. Is it the will of God that you be poor, broke? No. The will of the Lord, it is His wish. Not only His wish, He wishes that above all things, that you may prosper and be in health. But there is a clause here. And the clause, the condition clause is, as thy soul prospereth, as you grow in prayer and fasting in seeking God. You see, some of you think that because you pray five minutes, you're praying. Not really. The Lord complained to the apostles, to Peter, when he was in the Gethsemane garden, and he came back and said, you couldn't even watch one hour? Meaning that is the least the Lord expects from any of us, that we pray at least an hour. He went to the mountains and prayed all night, and he was the Lord. And, and the Apostle Paul says, pray without ceasing, meaning nonstop prayer, 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 prayer. And that is how you get to receive answers from the Lord. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call unto me and I will answer thee. What is call unto me? A five-minute prayer? No, call unto me is fasting, is praying, is seeking God with tears. And I'm not going to pat myself in the back or anything like that. But when I want to seek the Lord, I get on my knees and I spend hours. I spend hours seeking God, praising Him, worshiping Him, praying for people. When I ran out of words, I prayed for people. When I ran out of people, I praised the Lord. When I ran out of, out of praises uh, to the Lord, then I just sing to the Lord. I worship, I pray, I praise, I worship, I pray, I praise. Do that. And the other part of the verse of Jeremiah 33, 3 will come to pass in your life. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. I will shew thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Why did the Lord show me the things about T.B. Joshua? Why did the Lord show me stuff? Because I pray non-stop, without ceasing, seeking the face of God. Please tell me what happened, what is going on, what is it? And then the Lord show you stuff that hasn't shown to nobody. Now, it pleases the Lord to show certain people certain sins. And to other people, He doesn't. But He can confirm, because we all have the same Holy Spirit. If He can confirm to you, then you know it's true. But if you don't seek the Lord properly, then you won't see none of this stuff. What is the will of God? What does He wishes above all things? That you be prospering and you be in health. Is it the will of God that you be sick? No. Is it the will of God that you be broke, that you lost your job out of mandates and be completely broke? You might have lost your job out of mandates, but it is the will of God that you mayest prosper. That's what He wants. He wants you to prosper. But if He sends you the way out, and you don't seek the Lord because you are fully convinced in your own opinion. 
You're wise in your own opinion, and you say, no, that's not of God. That's of the devil, even though it's in the Bible. Because some people confuse money for evil, and the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. It doesn't say that money is bad. The love of money is bad. But in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 19, it says that money is good for everything, that money answereth everything. How will you do if you have millions of dollars with all them poor people in Asia and Africa and Latin America that you could, you know, mount schools for children, uh, hospitals, feed the poor, help the widows? How many TV uh, announcements that Jesus is coming back will you be able to pay if you had that money? Money answereth all things. Money is good for everything. The fact that you don't have it doesn't make you righteous. It makes you a broke believer. That's what it makes you. Not a righteous person because you don't have any money. There's people with plenty of money that have the blessing of God. And in fact, in the book of Galatians, it tells you that we want, we are to receive the blessing of Abraham promised by the Spirit. And what did the Holy Spirit promise to Abraham? That he was going to have the gift of tongues and interpretations? No. The gift of healings? No. Abundance. Wealth. That's what he was promised and that why, that's what he got. A promised land. A wealth. We are to receive, according to the book of Galatians, the blessings of Abraham because it is the will of God. He wishes above all things that we may prosper and be in health. But there is a clause. As thy soul prospereth. And many of you, your soul doesn't prosper. You don't pray more. You don't fast at all. You don't seek the Lord. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. And not listening to actually what the Lord is doing. And that is going to end up costing you dearly if you don't pay attention of what the Lord is actually doing because the Lord wants to bless the church for the next three years. is actually a prophetic word. Now, I'm going to give you a word that the Bible says. Those were the shadows of the things to come. And I ask you, is the three years blessing ever been fulfilled? No, it's actually now. It's reserved for the end times. This is a blessing that is going to be given. Why in the world will the Lord cross an X with a total solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024, if the rapture is before? Don't you see it? He's crossing an X, saying to the U.S., you're done. Saying to the Gentile church, you're done. This is it. An X is being marked. And the totality centers on little Egypt, meaning... The plagues are coming now. This is it. A Red Sea moment, the crossing. That's when it happens. That's when Nebu shows up. That's when the church leaves. We're going to be here for three years. You're going to need this morning. You better pay attention. You better listen. You better pray about it. You got prayer. Now, if you prayed and prayed and prayed and the Lord told you I'm a liar, just publish it, please. But I am one million percent that if you pray and pray and pray, the Lord's going to tell you, yeah, that's what's coming down the pike. I'm going to bless my people. And the Lord confirmed it to me by blessing me with a tremendous large deposit of tens of thousands of dollars. The very same night, he gave me the word that he was going to restore. He was going to restore. He was going to restore what the enemy has stolen. It is the latter rain. And you need to understand that because it says here in Joel, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain motherly, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month, which was in September Tishri. This prophecy, I believe, it has a double fulfillment in Tishri and, and then in Nisan as well. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. The Lord wants to give you plenty, plenty. 
and he will restore to you the years. You see, all these years you've been suffering, complaining, no money, broke, in trials. He will restore. Can you believe that? He will restore what the canker worm, the caterpillars, the locusts, and all them demons stole from you. Can you please open your mind and pray to the Lord and say, is this true? Or, and reserve your opinion and let the Lord speak his opinion about it. Can you do that? Because the Bible says clearly, and you shall eat in plenty, verse 26, and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am in the, uh, the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. You see, this is coming. One of the prophecies he gave me, um, you know, in, in those two, it, there were two days of visitation of the Lord in my life. He spoke to me in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 15 and 16. And he told me that the blessing was going to come from the land of the enemy. And pretty much he was going to command it. The enemy was going to have no choice about it. And that, that there was going to be a future for me. And that my kids, my children were going to come back. We're going to come back to their own borders, meaning come back to church in the spirit. Not just going, but going there, born again, preaching, seeking, praising, loving God. It's going to be a new birth. They're going to be seeing uh, visions. They're going to be having dreams. And, and it's going to happen in this visitation that the Lord is doing. If you keep on, we're living in Halloween and we're living in November and we're living in December, you're going to miss this blessing. This blessing is what the Lord is speaking right now. The three years blessing. He wants to bless you. Which part don't you get? It's really, I'm mad. I see some responses here. I see some... Uh, comments that, that really, I, I'm like, man, this is what the Lord is counting with. People that have no clue whatsoever, no understanding. I could tell by the answers because I have the gift of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the gift of discernment of spirits that these people literally have no clue. They don't seek the Lord. They're very average to low, below average Christians. They're below average believers. They're just listening. They feed out of videos, and that's their spiritual life. They don't have hours on their knees. They don't fast. They don't read the Word. They don't read the Bible. They don't pray. They don't pray. They don't pray, much less they fast. And... They don't get, as a result, revelation from above, nor confirmation of what is of God and what is not. And they're like stumbling, talking nonsense, and and stupid comments, really, that I read here that, that make me wonder, like, what's, what do they do with their life? Because, you know, if you're a believer, you don't want to be a mediocre believer. You want to be a believer where you get revelation from God, that where you know what God is doing in the midst of, at the time, you don't want to find out everything happened right after it happened. You want to know what's going on as it's going on, as God is actually acting and performing. And this is what the Lord is doing right now. He is performing the latter rain. He is blessing His people with a measure that is going to be a huge, huge unbelievable blessings. He's healing. He's bringing in these times healing of the body, healings to your children. He's bringing them back to their own border. He's blessing you economically so you don't suffer this anymore, that you may be able to preach, preach the gospel in the very last days that more people come to the weddings of the Lamb because once the Lord shuts the door, 
uh, is going to be it. And that is why, out of his love and mercy, he wants more people to come. Therefore, he is preparing his army of believers in wealth, that they don't have to worry about that no more. They can perform in the Spirit 24-7, preaching, 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 bringing people to God, and using that wealth to share with the poor, to bring more people to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what's going on. And if you don't understand what is going on right now, I suggest that you double, triple up in prayer, that you do your fasting and ask Jesus, and He will answer you. Please don't put no comments here if you don't do that, because it's pretty obvious the stupidity of your ignorance. And I have to be sorry about it. I have to say it. The stupidity of your ignorance surfaces like a lotus flower. Can you please shut up and pray about it? Because you're going to miss the blessing. That's what you're going to do. You're going to miss the blessing. You're going to miss the blessing. The Lord wants to bless you. One thing, again, I'm going to list here in my description box a couple of links of these uh, cryptocurrency exchanges if you want to invest a little bit with not much, the Lord will multiply it through a tremendous wealth. And this is what the Lord is doing. If you need assistance, just uh, put it in the comments and I will answer you. And I will guide you through. Please, listen to what the Lord is doing. That you may be blessed and be a blessing unto others with what the Lord is going to do very shortly. You don't want to miss this out. You don't want to miss this out. You want to be a part of it. I'm doing my best to explain it to you. Other than that, when it happens and you didn't do it, I'm going to do a video saying, I told you, and you're going to be broke, and I'm going to be rich to do many things for the Lord. You see, the Lord knows who He can trust His money with, because I know that money means absolutely nothing to me, but it means to proclaim and to announce the kingdom of God. You may be going astray, and the Lord may not give you anything because of that reason. But if you truly love God and want to serve Him, well, with a lot of money we serve Him better. There's a whole lot of things we can do. And that's what He wants us to do. He wants to bless us that we may use that money. It's like the parable of the talents was not actually only a parable. It was also a prophecy. He's going to give in this end times a talent of gold, to one, two talents of gold to the other one, and to the other one is going to give five. Those talents were a currency. They were not talents of virtues. They were talents of currency. They were talents of gold. He's going to give you money. What did you do with it? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to share it with the poor of the heirs. I'm going to bless. I'm going to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to proclaim that Jesus Christ is coming. Now, if you don't do that, that's going to be your problem. But that is what I'm going to do with it. And He is giving it. And you better receive it in Jesus' name. If you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, this is a wonderful time for you to come to the cross, to the feet of Jesus, the one who died for you, the one who loves you with eternal love, the one who gave you the name that you have. It was not your parents. It was the Lord Jesus Christ who gave you a name. The Bible says, before the world was made, I knew you. And I gave you a name. And He loves you with eternal love. He paid for your sins and the cross with His precious blood. Accept Jesus. Invite Him into your heart. Surrender to Him. And He will write your name in the book of life. Until next time, God bless you all. Shalom.